Why don't you put that live stream thing in the in the uh, podium? Jesus asks much of us, but offers the eternal love of the Father in return. To truly stay united to Jesus, we need grounding in two essential elements. First, by taking on the mind of Christ and adhering to what the Church proclaims. Second, by living in accord with the moral teaching of the Church. Following Jesus asks much of us, but offers us the eternal love of the Father in return. My brothers and sisters, we offer this Mass for the repose of the soul of Frank Ruggiero. Now let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. to God in the highest 
Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. Caesarea and sent him away to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall bow down before 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, history's greatest leaders influence people from the outside in with their speech, their ideas, their example, and even their presence. They move and motivate those around them, drawing others and stirring them to action. Jesus Christ, however, goes much deeper, influencing us from the inside out. 
He not only calls us from the outside through the voice of the church, the actions of providence, and the example of his faithful disciples, but he also unites himself to us so intimately that his very life flows through our veins. I am the vine, you are the branches. He explains this in today's gospel. Where does a vine stop and a branch begin? Their union is too complete to tell. The same sap that runs through the vine runs through the branches. Just so, grace is God's own divine life flowing through Christ and into us. In this way and in so many other ways, Jesus Christ stands alone among great historical figures. Not only does he surpass all others in their own game, but he plays in an entirely different league. He is a leader, but he is also the Lord. My friends, how grateful, how grateful we should all be that he has seen fit to make us branches of his vine. And yet, as human beings, we are a unique kind of branch. We, you and I, are responsible for keeping ourselves united to the vine. And if we don't, Jesus makes it perfectly clear that we will not bear fruit. We will wither, we will die, and we will be burned. So dear friends, the question arises, how do we, you and I, stay united to the vine so that we can bear good fruit and share in eternal life with Christ? In this passage, Jesus points out four ways to do just that. First, staying united to the vine means constantly growing, growing in our prayer life. Prayer is how we expose our souls to the divine sunlight. Just as plants need exposure to sunlight for energy and so we need to expose ourselves to God's truth and love through reading and reflecting on the sacred scriptures and through conversing with him in the quiet of our hearts. And so if our prayer life is the same when we are 50 as it was when we were 15, well, that might be a sign that we are stunting our spiritual growth for Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta, listening to God in prayer was the very first link in the sacred chain of interior peace. Here's how she put it. The fruit of silence is prayer, and the fruit of prayer is faith, and the fruit of faith is love, and the fruit of love is service. And the fruit of service is peace. Second, remaining in Christ means making good use of the sacraments, most especially the sacraments of the Holy Eucharist and that of reconciliation. If a branch gets damaged in a windstorm, the gardener knows how to tie it up properly so that it will once again attach itself back to the trunk. He binds it, or he grafts it back to the vine. That's what happens with confession. Jesus renews the connection with him that our sin has damaged or has broken. All the saints and popes recommend that we use this great gift regularly and frequently. And in the Eucharist, our union with Christ is strengthened more powerfully than at any other time. We receive into our souls and our minds and our hearts an influx of grace like no other because he is truly present there under the appearances of bread and wine. If prayer is sunlight, then the Eucharist is like a rain shower, refreshing 
and renewing our souls. Every Holy Communion is like a spiritual springtime in which a new outpouring of divine life surges into our hearts and into our minds. Third, staying united to the vine requires loving obedience to God's will. This is what St. John refers to in today's second reading when he writes, Children, let us not love one another in word or in speech, but in deed and in truth. It is easy to say pretty words, to talk the talk of being a good Catholic, but that talk has to translate, friends, into actions and the strength of virtues into honesty, purity, faithfulness, courage, self-sacrifice, and obedience to the church's teaching. Otherwise, we are no better than actors on a stage, making a show of looking like Christ's followers, but not really following Christ. This loving obedience to God, our wise and all-powerful Father, in big things and in little things, is the surest sign of humility. And humility is the shortcut to holiness, wisdom, and lasting happiness. Fourth, staying united to the vine means allowing God, allowing him to prune us. Jesus says that each healthy branch of the vine must be pruned so that it bears more fruit. This pruning takes the form of suffering. Yes, suffering. It may be painful, physical suffering, like sickness, disease, or perhaps financial insecurity, or even just old age. It may be hidden interior sufferings, like the loss of a loved one, or watching a dear relative of ours abandon their Catholic faith. Whenever God permits these kinds of sufferings, the ones that we don't seem to have any control over, we have to let our Father remind us that we are under His control. He is the vine dresser. He knows how much pruning we can handle. And the amount is different for each and every one of us. And He knows how to use that suffering to unite us more deeply to Christ, who suffered on the cross to redeem the world. In times of pain and hardship, God is begging us to trust him more and more, to pray in the depths of our hearts that beautiful prayer that he himself taught us through his revelations to St. Faustina of the Divine Mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Accepting the cross, not rebelling when God tries to prune us, is the secret of all the saints. And as St. Ignatius of Loyola put it, if God causes you to suffer much, it is a sign that he has great designs for you, and that he certainly intends to make you a saint. And if you wish to become a great saint, well, we see you. We seek to give you much more opportunity for suffering. For there is no wood better to kindle the fire of holy love than the wood of the cross, which Christ used for his own sacrifice of boundless charity. Well, there you have it, my friends. P S O S. P S O S. Prayer the sacraments, loving obedience, and suffering in union with Christ are what keep Christians sap flowing in our lives. They yield the fruit we yearn for most, a life that resounds with meaning and with energy, with vigor, a life that positively impacts others 
and exudes joy and enthusiasm for this great gift that we have been given. A life that changes this world for the better in as profound a way as Christ's own life did. And the life whose meaning and impact overflow into eternity. My dear friends, this is what God wants for us. This is why Jesus came to earth. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Bearing much fruit makes life worth living. Without it, we are dry, dead branches, good for nothing except to be thrown into the fire. As we continue with this holy mass, let's thank God from the depths of our hearts for uniting us to the vine of Jesus Christ. And when we receive our Lord, Holy Communion, let's promise him that this week we will make a decent effort to do our part to protect and strengthen that union with him. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us humbly offer our prayers to God the Father, the source of all love and goodness. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all church leaders, may they persevere in love and mercy, always leading the faithful to remain united with the risen Lord, so as to bear much fruit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all bishops, priests, deacons, and clergy, may their faith in the risen Lord inspire their continued leadership. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all elected officials, may they work diligently toward a society of equality for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who struggle with food insecurity, may they be blessed by the generosity of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the St. James community of faith, may the Lord's commandment to love one another as he loved us be the motivation for everything we do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have no one to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, especially Grace Menente, and in a special way we remember the repose of the soul of Frank A. Ruggiero, for whom we offer this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sanctity of all life, for the conception of the natural death, let us pray to the Lord. And for an increase in vocations for the priesthood, the active, and religious life, and for all our seminarians, let us pray to the Lord. 
and for the 30 young people in our parish who received First Holy Communion this weekend, and for all our compromandi who will be confirmed next Saturday. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Hear our prayers, O God, as we lift them up to you, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. O God, by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead. Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you, to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. No. 
holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you to by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you in consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely on our failing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Frank our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and we remember especially at this Mass the repose of the soul of Frank A. Ruggiero, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
command informed by divine teaching. We dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter, enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe. Dear friends, I will now pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. My dear friends, Deacon Joe and I will now descend to distribute Holy Communion. I ask you to kindly listen to the instructions of our gracious volunteers. Thank you for your kindness and understanding.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends in Jesus Christ, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you all for joining Deacon Joe and I at this rooftop outdoor mass. I in fully intend to continue these 11.30 a.m. rooftop masses until we get past this pandemic, or the, I'm told by the bishop that we have to stop them, but I don't see that happening. Spoken. Let, let anyone here who wants these masses to end now toot their horn. Thank you, thank you. My friends, we are in need of cantors and musicians, so if you know anyone or you yourself would like to volunteer, we're trying to grow our music ministry and there's details in the bulletin. This coming Friday, May 7th, is First Friday. So as we do here every First Friday, from 1 to 6 p.m., 1 to 5 p.m., we have adoration available in the church. At 4 o'clock, we pray the rosary, which we do every day at 4 o'clock. And then we will have evening prayer followed by solemn benediction. So that begins at 1, rosary at 4. Uh, our beloved sons and our prayer show ministry meetings are next, this coming Thursday, the 6th. And then our Respect for Life Rosary, our monthly Respect for Life Rosary, will be this Thursday at 4 o'clock in the church, and it will also be live streamed. We live stream the rosary every day at 4 o'clock. So please join us in church on Thursday for Respect for Life or join the live stream. Finally, uh, birthday blessings. Anyone here have a birthday during this month of May? And perhaps more on the live stream. So please join me. Dear God, our Father. Dear God, our Father. Thank you for bringing your beloved sons and daughters into existence. Thank you for bringing your beloved sons and daughters into existence. Thank you for being with them and loving them in every moment of their lives. Thank you for being with them and loving them every moment of their lives. And in this new year of their birth. And in this new year of their birth. May they know your love in new and deeper ways. May they know your love in new and in deeper ways. And may they share that love most generously with others. And they may share that love most generously with others. As together we say, Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down your heads for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.